Uh, live? We're live? Oh. Alrighty. Uh, are you ready for a countdown? Alright, three, two, one, go. Alrighty, um, this is Burning Rangers for the Sega Saturn. Uh, came out late in the Saturn's life cycle in about 1998 or so. Uh, basically, it's an action platformer focused on futuristic firefighting. Uh, it's a Sega, Sega a Sonic team game, you know, famous for making Sonic and Nights in the Dreams and other junk. Um, most people don't really know this game. Uh, didn't sell well, came out late in the cycle. Uh, but it's, it's a really fun game. Uh, mainly people know it for uh, its theme song, which uh, won't be hearing in the run, sadly. So, uh, one thing you'll notice is that the frame rate's pretty bad. Uh, basically, they repurposed the Knights in the Dream engine, which wasn't meant for this kind of thing. And the main main speed of movement is is dashing in the air, which is similar to a Mega Man dash where, or a Mega Man slide where you have to press the, except instead of pressing down, you just press the direction you're going and then you press the jump button as well. Um, you also have different kinds of jumps. You have your uh, regular jump and then if you double tap it, you can do a, a super high jump. And then uh, if you uh, time it separately, uh, you'll get a shorter jump, but uh, a bit more control in your movement. So we're going to jump up here, skip a bunch of stuff. And so like this is just like the first level, it gives you an intro. Um, there's a lot of voice acting in this game. A lot of these people are uh, have, have worked in other Sega games. And uh, our goal is to rescue as few people as possible. Basically one of the things in the game is that you can rescue people. But each time you rescue someone, it plays a cutscene, it's kind of slow, so we only rescue people that we actually have to rescue. And, uh, they basically, uh, put, uh, gems in the place the, that you need to collect. And, uh, speaking of gems, that has a very Sonic style of health. Uh, basically, as long as you have one crystal, uh, you cannot die. So that's, like, our goal is to, like, if we ever needed to take damage, we can always recollect a crystal. So now here I'm just opening some doors uh, to get to some guy I need to rescue. Looks like there's a switch in the center. And then uh, if you notice that meter on the top is going down uh, over time, when that hits zero or when that hits uh, like completely red, uh, basically we'll see a bunch of chain of fires in the and the game will get significantly harder uh, for a time. Basically, it's just punishing you for not uh, putting out fires because if you put out fires, the meter goes up and things are safer. But since we want to go fast, we don't want to put out fires unless we absolutely have to. But like, you put out fires, you get crystals, um, so that's helpful. Um, you also have a, a charged attack, which uh, puts out tougher fires without um, multiple shots, but you don't get any crystals for it, and it destroys any nearby crystals. But uh, we will be using the charge shot for boss fights. So uh, there's a total of four missions in this game. Uh, with the last mission spread across like three sections. The power has been shut off here too. So here Are the power is out again. We've got to find the switch to turn the switch back on, or turn the power back on. Turn to the right. This is me. Elevators to the underground levels are shut down. So Those here I'm just like, share. just speeding over everything. There should be a switch near you. This is Jumping killed. over it, hit the, the switch. Override switch. So fire is kind of weird. It, it, the hitbox the is for it is now like lower the ground. So you can generally fly over it, and uh, fire can push you upwards for like no apparent reason, and sometimes you can get like sorta stuck in doors if they're like in if they're like right in front of the door. Of course. Reed, what happened? Chris, the energy generator just kicked in. Central computer. So you know, plots happening here. Um, I'm getting light force things are happening. We got to figure out what's going on. Copy that. So if you find this art style familiar, uh, this is like the same artist who did the Fantasy Star Online series of games. 
So, um, and there's a lot of similar air emlets, elements between those art styles as well, and uh, Burning Rangers even has cameos in, in those games. Like, um, some, like, there's some, like, themed weapons from it, from this game that are in Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2 as well. And, um, like, the theme song from this game is available in Fantasy Star Online 1, like, as, like, a disc. So here's a, a mandatory rescue. Can't do anything about it. Basically, it just tells you there's a monster and you've got to take it down. Hurry, get out of here. Confirming transport coordinates. Begin transport. So a lot like Nights in the Dream, this game is very arcadey, with like meant to be having like replaying it. But one of the interesting things about replaying the game is if you're playing from a completed file. Uh, the levels get randomized. So, like, placement of uh, things you need to do and people you can rescue are in different places. Ooh. Okay. It's all good. So, so, normally in this room, you're supposed to do a bunch of platforming that circle around the room to get the top, but we're just gonna jump up here, uh, grab onto that. And then we can just go straight to the boss. And the first boss of this game is a giant is a giant evil flower. So every time we hit it, it's gonna go off in a direction. And then uh there we go. And then I'll spew a bunch of fire. Let's see, come on. And uh, hitboxes are very weird in this game too, or rather not hitboxes, but invulnerability frames. Like sometimes you can hit an enemy again really quickly and sometimes you have to wait a bit. Oop. Watch out. Oop. Getting hit here. It all depends whether or not your, uh, your uh, attack locks on. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of a slow start. But first stage is pretty easy for the most part. And uh, soon we'll be going into the longest stage in the game. And it's kind of a risk. It's not a risky stage, but it, you can lose a lot of time if you die before the first checkpoint. The first checkpoint is very far in. And there's a lot of cutscenes in the second chapter as well. So, um, there are animated cutscenes in this game, but, you know, for speed's sake, we skip them. And, you know, they're, they're alright. Uh, there's mm, not that many, but they do tell a story. Uh, basically, a lot of weird things are going on in succession, and we'll find out way, why later. So now we're all the way down under in New Zealand at some underwater research facility. Our mission is to rescue them. Because uh, some weird things are going on. Okay, there we go. So sometimes movement can be a little wonky. So uh, so now we can swim, but swimming is really fast. All you do is just mash, uh, jump in your shoot button. Yes, the report sent to us says the park was closed today. Only maintenance crews are inside. You just match your jump your shoot button, jump and shoot button, and you can move really fast underwater. Because basically one moves you upward and the other moves you down. Turn left. There we go. Chillis, there should be an air duct in that room. You should be able to enter it. Okay! So basically the directions in this game are, are kind of misleading. Basically they want you to turn left, find the locked door, and tell you to find a way to unlock it. A shutter is open. But we're just gonna go straight to the to the turn lock. Right. And now we can just go on. Stay alert until the fire's completely out. Tillis, do you and now here we're gonna meet uh, Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> if you're familiar with the Echo Don't the Dolphin worry, games, makes a nice little cameo like here. Uh, okay, that was a weird system. camera angle that it put me in. So now we're gonna go into a little bit of a scary place. Whoa. Where I need to room is right just damage boost my way through. Wow. 
Circulation system reactivated. And so basically, just by turning on the circulation system, we save the dolphin and it lets us uh, proceed to the next area. You must hurry. This is big. I found 15 people and no one seems to be injured. Great. We can send the Watch out. Oof. Okay. Be careful. Your shield is out. Ow! Okay, that was kind of scary. Because I was right Everybody before the first checkpoint in the game. Going in. So now that I hit this elevator, I've hit the first checkpoint. So if I die, I'll come back to this checkpoint instead of uh, all the way back to the beginning of the level. And uh, loading screens are always fun. Prince, I think the dolphin tell us the director's okay, there we go. office is on that floor. We have no available data on the layout. You must find the director's office on your own. Roger. Wow. Whoa. Whoa, well, indeed. Okay, I'm gonna go and get crystals. I seem to be getting hit a lot more than I'd like. Okay, so now we have to kill this robot to open the door. Uh, this is one of two robots in the stage we have to kill. Uh, there are others that do appear, but we don't have to actually kill them. This is the only one of two that we have to actually kill. I found a kid. This doesn't look good. I seriously doubt he's part of the maintenance crew. Obviously, something's not right. I'm checking out the current situation now. There we go. Except the coordinate. I found you! Alright, now we found the director of the place. You. Do you know what caused the fire? That earthquake. But there was no earthquake reported. I'll send you out. You can answer questions later. Coordinate set. We got a call from somewhere. Confirmed. Ready to transport. So now he's going to give us the key we need to get to the next area. And a lot of things are getting now things are getting worse as they do in uh, firefighting games. We have about 200 visitors trapped inside here. We need help. 200. That's not what our reports say. Chris, Tillis, head to the monitor room. We need accurate data fast. Use the ID card to open the hatch. Okay. All right, now we can continue on. I'm just gonna fly right through the fire because we're cool like that. You need to find the ID card. All right, Hurry now up. we can continue Lives on. This is Reed. I'm entering the water channel. This is big. I'm right behind. And now we're just gonna be going through a series of corridors. Uh, can we make any headway? For whatever reason, it likes to load right before like doors with buttons. I don't know why. So here's another Toss robot, but we can just drive right or area. drive fly right by it. Mrs. Reed. We're almost in the recreation area. Then here we're gonna get the map for the area, which uh, doesn't do us any good, but it helps uh, progress the story. Basically giving the map to our navigator. The director said that there was a special event today and that more than two hundred children were invited. Reed and Big are already there for the rescue. I'm going there to help too. You must evacuate. It's too far from your location. We don't have enough time. Chris, the dolphin was saying something about a monster. This may be the key to saving everyone. I'm oh yeah, for whatever reason, our, our main character can monster. speak with dolphins, but Tell she's the only one who can. And you can play as another character named Chris, Sho, and he can't speak anything. to dolphins, but the dolphin helps him anyways. Another child suffer like I had to. I'm going to save their future. I'm not going to give up. We found them! There's not 200 people down here. There's even more. Just relax, Reed. Tell us, count me in. We can do it. Thanks. Alright, so we need to hit that switch. Um, I've actually missed that before, and uh, it basically just it prevents you from progressing because you need to open the door. Area. I'll check the next sector. Got it. Be careful. Chris, the water level of this floor uh, is rising okay. fast. There we go. I'll move them to the upper level first. Okay. Ow! Big, your shield's down. No, Your don't want to go there. There we go. We I kind of messed with my camera. So, um, water it's a, since it's a Sonic Team game, the camera is pretty lousy. So now we need to go underwater here, and then we'll get a little little ride from the dolphin. Oh, there you are. The dolphin's Can cool like that. Out? Can you take me to the bottom of this building? Wow, this is great. Get treated to a nice cutscene of us uh, sort of riding a dolphin, I guess. <laughs> so now we're going to enter a small and a row section here where we just.
technically fo the dolphins guiding us, but uh, you don't really get to see it just because Thank of how you. the uh, camera the works. Oh, not this section yet, but soon. Tillis, I'm not going back. The new data analysis indicates the existence of a huge energy beam at the bottom. Maybe this is what you were talking about. Okay, here we go. Rick. Hit a wall. Tillis. Ground breaks part. This is Reed. How's Tillis? Show! Tillis, follow me. Yeah, right. Eat my dust. The survivors to safer ground. Restarting the transporting process now. So with how this lag laggy this game is, there's it's really easy to lose inputs. But you know, you can for the most part it's pretty good about handling inputs even when it's uh, you're getting a lot of lag. Okay, here we go. Now we're in the, the miniature underwater section. And uh This and the final stage are the only stages that have underwater. And the final stage has it very briefly in like the third part. I won't be able to provide accurate navigation data while you're in the water. The, no, so the second careful. part. We're running out of crystals. I can't transport any more survivors. Show's on his way. Boy, what are you doing here? Tillis, what is he saying? He says there is a monster below. He says it's been the cause of this mess. What? Can you take me there? Alrighty. So now, like, it, things get a little tricky here because, like, it likes I'm to ready. grab the walls and what whatnot for whatever reason. Alright, that's not bad. Exactly Sometimes the camera likes to go into weird positions. There we go. And then that's all the swimming we do for this. Well, no, there's one. Sorry, there's one more part of swimming in this stage. But it's very trivial because it's basically just going down a corridor. Tillis, I don't have the full data of the area you're in now. You must find a way out. Okay, let's Tillis, go down here. Time is running out. And we want to go through the fire. Tillis, hurry up, but don't panic. Stay cool. Tillis, quick! There's not much time left. Okay, just a second. Jump into the water. Okay. So now we're hitting a section where like, there's a lot of fire going off, or a lot of explosions rather, and it makes this part kind of hard, this next part kind of hard if it still if it continues to do that. Because now we have to kill only this last robot here. Okay, there we go. Hurry up. So there's three robots in that room, but you only need to kill the one that's near the door. And it can get a little tricky because uh, the robots do shoot stuff at you. So now we're getting the second box boss of the game, which is like a, a giant fish thing that like hurls stuff at you. And the, and the arena is, is like another kind of, I don't know, not cylindrical, but like circular. What's going on? And this one has a very wonky hitbox. Like, it's like it, it's random whether or not it's up. But so far, so good, actually. So we want to avoid getting hit by those bombs. Okay, one more hit. Okay. So now we'll be treated to a, a, a decent length cutscene for the game that we can't skip. Did Tillis make it? Hey, are we floating up? And we met, we single-handedly saved the place by destroying the monster and destroying the joint that was holding the place down. So now the rest of the team can save all the kids and stuff. Because, uh... 
It's the right thing to do. <laughs> Supposedly. Chris, where's Tillis? What happened to her? Don't worry, she's okay. There she is. This is great. Chris, um, it's okay if I ride on his back for a while, right? Please? Okay, but only if I can get to ride for her. Alrighty, get to ride some dolphins. So uh, now we're gonna be in space for the mission for the third mission. Basically, we find out that the whole thing started from the, some sp some some rogue signal being sent out from the space station. So now we're gonna go to space to investigate, and then it also gets hap happens to get um, the a lot of fires as well. <laughs> RK four zero four crews are working on Firebird. Can you hear me? That's strange. There's no response. What's the point of waiting here? Let's go. And so gravity is kind of weird. If you like, if you dash, you move, you move downward as well. When you're like in a zero gravity section. Enter from the starboard port. Roger. Looks like that elevator will only ascend. There. We, oh, there we go. So basically, you just go up here to unlock a door, and then we're gonna be going back to that same spot. And now we're gonna be hitting a few, a couple more switches. Just to open more doors. And then there's some things there that hit, can hit us. This is Reed. We are in zero gravity. There we go. There should be a switch on top. Try climbing up to reach it. And then we'll be going back the way we came a little bit, and going left instead of right for the third and final switch. But before that, we're gonna hit hit this. Get hit by that, uh, just to get out of that a little bit sooner. Basically, it's supposed to suck, try to suck you in, and then it'll get patched. But if you get hit by it, you get knocked out of that animation a lot sooner. This is the escape port. Doesn't look like anyone's here. There's only one escape pod. And like I said, as long as I have one crystal, I'll be fine. Nothing. Can't die. It is aged quite a bit. Proceed carefully. So, uh, I jumped over the fire, sometimes it can be a little tricky, sometimes you get caught in and they'll be pushed upward by the fire and get kind of like stuck in the, the door frame. But eventually you'll get pushed out, so it's like, there's no like, potential for like a soft block or anything like that. So the guy with the bazooka, his name is Big Landman. He's the, the oldest of the group. And he's like in his 30s or something like that, I guess that's pretty old. So now here, uh, there's some utility to vehicle that we gotta destroy in order to get past because it's trying to hinder our movement for no reason at all. Don't okay. depend on your shield too much. Ooh, did not know you could put through it. That That's actually interesting. Hurry. All right, and there's a guy there that you can rescue, but we can just fly over him. Because, like I said, rescuing people is slow, and we want to go fast. Tillis, that area has already been secured. Go in through gate B03. Roger. Oh. Show it's dangerous. Stay back. No way! People are still out there. Find another route then. Okay. And so basically, this level is just mostly like hitting buttons and stuff, and flying around. But uh, we will do. We will get to. Um, a section where we can't where we can't hit, get hit at all otherwise we'll have to restart the section it's sort of like an escort basically we're carrying a young boy to an escape pod Tillis, you're in charge of this area so make sure you look more carefully there we go Chris I found a stowaway okay so I'm like getting a lot of drop inputs here Aren't you, uh, Mel? what are you doing here I'm, there we go I was hiding with my brother he said he was going to... One of the three doors is open now. So, uh, the dialogue is pretty long, and so we just get it cut off because we're quick. So now we're going back back this way to a new area. And now we need to hit one last switch for this, uh, level. And this is, like, the shortest game in the stage, easily. Because, like, we're already near the end. 
Uh, the Boston stage is fairly easy, but uh, he can be fairly lengthy if you're unlucky. Because basically, uh, the way hit detection works uh, can really ver make the, the fight long, longer or quicker. He'll be okay. So now you? we're rescuing young little boy I'm here. Ranger. I'm here to help you. Wow, you're a burning ranger, right? You're really a burning ranger. And get some quality top to your voice acting. Yes, and I'll give you an autograph later. Chris, I'll transport him. Set coordinates. Negative. Magnetic storms jamming our systems. We can't transport him from here. Monkey is getting hot. There should be one nearby. Come on, let's go. So now we got to carry this guy. Um, if we get hit by fire, we have to I'm redo the section. Uh, this section yeah. here. So our goal is to avoid the fire and stay on this plat on this uh, narrow platform. Tillis, our transmission's breaking up. Please hurry and get out of there. Tillis, and it's very I'm laggy here. here. Tillis, be careful. Okay, got that jump. All right, got a fairly lengthy cutscene here. Very, very, very heart wrenching. You're going to get in, of course. What about you, Tillis? I'll find another escape pod. I don't want to leave you. Be brave. He's waiting for you to come back. You don't want him to worry any more than he has to, right? Tillis, you have to promise me you'll come back and, and give me your autograph. I promise. I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting till you come back. What have I got myself into? I can't break my promise with him. Duh. And now we go into a boss fight. Just like that. So now this boss, uh, basically we have to shoot its core uh, a bunch, but it has protected by armor that we have to shoot to Thanks, knock I off, but it can also level. pick its armor back Why? up. Run! Who is it? Who's there? The defense systems have been activated. Hurry, get out of here. And so another little mechanic to note in this game is if you're sta if you uh, you charge your beam being faster when you're jumping than when you are when you're standing on the ground for whatever reason and so far I'm getting uh, good luck on the, the aiming that was a very solid fight Chop yep chopped off the little boy's hand he didn't need it anymore but that was a that was a very solid fight. It's not something that I usually get in in regular runs lately. Because, uh, like I said, the hitboxes just like to be their random self. Okay, so now we're entering the final mission, which is I wouldn't say it's it's long. Maybe by maybe like total, it's longest. But there's multiple sections to it, unlike the mission two. Chris, Chris. So now we're going we're going through the section where we're all alone and we're being guided by some mysterious woman. Uh it turns out that she's been cryogenically frozen because she has like some sort of rare disease that hadn't hadn't been cured, and the whole event started because a cure had been found. And I messed up that jump. So basically there's a jump you can do there, uh where you can skip having to hit this button. Because there's a pla there's um, a pathway up there that we can get to, but uh, it's a it's a it's a difficult jump. Go straight. Okay, so and then up ahead, there's a Go mini down. boss here that we're technically supposed to fight. Whoa. Whoa! But you can technically just skip it just by going down the hole there. So uh, instead of fighting that mini boss to reveal the path go the next down. way, we can just go under it. And uh, during this section, there is no enemies. Uh, there we go. Just a bunch of underwater stuff, and it's fairly lengthy, go but up. like it's chill. There we go. And it's it's fairly easy to get lost here, but it's a very chill section, so there's like no real worry in terms of losing your way but basically you just want to get down here and now we're out of the water for now but there's like just like one extra little tiny section here for whatever Go reason straight. and now we're going to dodge some boulders well maybe not dodge them but we'll try to dodge them wow you're 
almost there. Okay, and now we're hitting. Now we hit the probably the most difficult platforming section in the game. Uh, plat platforming and movements are already kind of difficult. Go up. And there's a lot of tight platforms we have, or narrow platforms we have to jump to. There we go. So basically, we're just skipping a bunch of like platforming that you'd normally have to do. There we go. And we're almost to the top already. So I'm just utilizing the various kinds of jumps in the, that are available in this game to get all the way to the top. And now we're going to take down this uh, little mini boss that's a really easy um, crystal. Uh, basically, the worst it can do is destabilize platforms, uh, which can be kind of dangerous sometimes, but all we do is just uh, keep jumping. I mean, I guess it shoots stuff at you, but it never hits. And note to, note to people is that you can still die even after the boss is dead. Because basically, uh, you can fall off. And now we're entering this little um, section. It's like almost an auto-scroller, but you can make it a little bit faster by hitting all the boosts and avoiding um, obstacles. And it's a really neat second section with like some real pumping music. Are you all right? I'm okay. Listen, I got some info about this spaceship. I heard it. We all heard her voice. I cannot imagine how devastating the damage would be if an object. Oh yeah, the ship. The ship is is crashing into Earth now. Okay. So we have to stop that from happening. On your mark. Confirmed. Destination: ship central core. Full blast. Roger. And now we have to get to the core of the ship. And this is the fastest way there. So basically we want to uh, hit as many boosters as we can while avoiding the obstacles. Because the obstacles, they slow down your speed and the boosters, uh, they speed you up of course. But it's, sometimes it's really hard to avoid obstacles because you just move so fast and movement isn't all that great. So here I'm just mashing the shoot button or the, the jump button, I guess, to shoot uh, shoot stuff in front of me, and it doesn't really matter. There we go. Ooh, that was interesting. The game locked up for just a brief second. I've never had that happen. Oh well, this Saturn's old. They've had it for 20 years almost. All right. Pass through it without too much incident. Entering the ship's and area. got a pretty good time. 110 is pretty good. You can definitely get lower, for sure, but that's still not bad. So now we get a bit, little bit of dialogue here, and then we get to the final okay. stage, where there's actually um, a skip in the level. It. It's uh, the only one that we found, okay, everyone. but it's, it skips uh, basically the entirety of the stage. And all it takes is uh, one jump that's not precise, but it's not easy to get all the time. But usually I'm pretty good about it in the first try, but not always. Let's go! But basically it skips like a, a bunch of stuff. But So we want to do is jump up here, but we don't want to go too far forward. Otherwise we'll trigger a cutscene with Big Landman. Then we'll jump and then do a dash grab onto the ledge here and we'll just go right into the next area skipping a bunch of stuff and then this will also allow us to skip an upcoming cutscene trigger after this mini boss so it'll be so now we need to kill this uh flowered mini boss or snake or whatever it is there we go so there's a like a, a, a timing you want for hitting this boss but it's really easy to lose that timing because you can only hit it when its eyes open. So normally when you enter this room there's a cutscene, but because we skipped um, a bunch of the level that cutscene doesn't play. 
But that cutscene still can play if you die uh, to that boss, to that mini boss. You forgot one thing. So now we're just do a little platforming, and now we're right at the end. Basically, there's a, a one more boss. There's two more bosses to go, like one sub boss and one final boss. And the final boss is not difficult, but it can be challenged. It can be, mm, I don't know, challenging is the right word. It can get very laggy. <laughs> So for the sub boss, very easy. Just hit the core a bunch and avoid getting hit. There we go. Very, very easy fight. And now it transforms into the final boss. Which, uh, while it doesn't name, I call it Dark Falls because it reminds me a lot of Dark Falls from uh, Fantasy Star Online. And so basically, uh, we, what we want to do is get double hits on this boss when possible. Because it has like a weird hitbox thing where sometimes you can hit it multiple times. So each time technically you hit it, you have to hit these things. and sometimes you can get double hits off in between phases but you can only hit it when its wings are glowing Okay. okay there we go like I said as long as we have one crystal we're good and time will be coming up soon I'll call it when it is Okay, so I'm getting very unlucky on double hits here. Okay, awesome, got a double hit. But you can also get a triple hit, which is much harder to get. You have to be a lot more precise about it. Okay, one more hit to go, and time will be coming up very soon. Uh, I hate tornadoes. Mm. Time. And that's uh, Burning Rangers. Now we'll be treated to a nice little ending cutscene. It looks like the shield is gone. Did I? I just tied my PB. For transport now. I just tied my PB. There's a huge magnetic storm and I can't synchronize the coordinates. How can this be? Chris, take a look at the monitor. Prepare to abort. I'll to retime it anyway, so I did do a local recording. But that, that's really cool. If I PB, that's that's uh, definitely pretty cool because I felt I didn't play that good. Oh. Yeah, ton of, ton of room improvement. I'm just lazy. <laughs> but now we're gonna get a nice little heartfelt ending cutscene. Tillis. I'm back home. Yep. You did a remarkable job by like I said, there's anime cutscenes that I just skip them. You made it back. Cool. Um, thank you for having me. I'm glad I, I'm glad I was able to fill in to another runner who was having issues with his internet. Um, it's a great game. Very expensive. If you have a Sega Saturn, burn a copy. Uh, it's it's well worth playing at least once. Um, you can play it on emulator. Uh, Yabo Use is an excellent Sega Saturn emulator. I believe it plays this game. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Um, there's also uh, Mednafen, but that's much more difficult to set up, but they're both excellent emulators. Uh, thanks for having me, and uh, good luck with the rest of the marathon.